Hi everybody. So I'm here in Morocco, which is in the desert, and have a look on the eve of Lunar New Year. Have a look at this. It has been raining all day. Now we're coming into so auspicious. I'll, I'll tell you why. So basically we're coming into the year of the uh, wood dragon. Now all dragons are associated with water in the Chinese astrology because uh, they represent life force and water is life. So uh, this is a very auspicious year, a very fertile year, a very abundant year. And that's because the uh, Chinese zodiac corresponds to the transit of Jupiter known to the Romans as Jove, hence the saying, by Jove, that'll happen. Because Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. So when it moves into a new sign, and it's in a sign for a year each year, it blesses that sign with expansion, with growth, with abundance. Now, according to Vedic astrology, which is Eastern astrology, also known as sidereal astrology, on February 3, Jupiter moved into the second mansion, which is in Western astrology, we know it as Taurus. Now, if we look at it from uh, Western astrology, it's been in Taurus since May last year, and it'll, Jupiter will be uh, in till the 25th of May this year. But Western astrology is based on uh, a cycle called the precession of the equinoxes, which is based on the seasons. So um, starting from the vernal or spring equinox each year and the position of our sun. Eastern astrology is based on the astronomical placement. Um, so, you know, some say it's more, um, you know, no point in getting into a debate as to which one is more correct. But the point is the tradition of the Lunar New Year responds to the Vedic, which is the Eastern perspective. So this is a very auspicious uh, time for really um, investing in that which you value. Okay, so if you're doing work that doesn't align with your soul values, with what you love, because Taurus is under the star of Venus. So we have the blessing of Venus when we use our energy, we use our talents and skills to do that which we love, which is usually where our, our talents and our gifts lie. And when we invest time in nurturing those gifts and share those as a gift to the world, we have the support of the star, which in the tarot, the star is considered the most auspicious card, you know, um, it's hence why we say, you know, you're going to follow your star and wherever it leads you, you know, the calling of the light within you, which is calling you to enact a vision which lives in your heart. And it's your gift to humanity this lifetime if you choose to take up the quest to make that dream a reality. So this year is saying, go for it. OK, don't hold back because all the fates are aligned, they're with you. Now, um, I just wanna speak a little bit about water. Even though Taurus is an earth sign and year of the uh, wood dragon is basically an earth dragon. It's about us really taking care of our bodies um, and, uh, you know, being grateful for what we have. And the way that we show gratitude is by being resourceful with what we have, not bitching and moaning and envying what others have, coveting what others have, but rather, you know, making good use of our own current good fortune. And, you know, we're living, particularly in the West, fertility has been on the decline. And I see that as very symbolic because that's where the feminine is not seen. And if we don't truly see and understand something, we can't embody it. We can't embrace it. 
And we have this kind of notion, this sort of arrogance, superiority from the West looking towards the East. We see the women veiled and it's like, oh, you know, the women aren't liberated in the East. And whilst, yes, there is definite um, external patriarchal oppression on what women can wear, where they can go, the Eastern cultures, in my experience living in the Eastern cultures compared to living in the West, the feminine values, the feminine traits are more honoured and revered, such as community, the sacredness of life, art, sharing. You know, these are all feminine qualities which our first teacher, the Earth Mother, instills in us in the first seven years of our life. The West is more masculinized, okay? It's more about what's happening out there rather than the inner realms, rather than the negative space. You know, even if we look at, say, Japanese floristry, they really value the negative space or Japanese art, you know, or even haiku poetry. It's about what isn't said. Whereas in the West, it's very much about the external, what we can perceive through our five senses. It's more egoic. It's, um, you know, we're, hi, Shauna, uh, we're, we're validated more for what we can show for ourselves. G'day, Mirage. So, you know, it's harder for us in the West to sometimes see how the goddess is veiled. And our challenge at the moment, particularly with this transit, this dragon energy shaking up Taurus, the sign of the embodied goddess on earth, she is waking up. And I'm so, so excited to share with you the stage show that I'm unveiling this year, which I'm hoping will be picked up to tour around the world. It's called Yantra and it's a celebration of the unveiling of the goddess. It's the heroine's journey. And we hear a lot about the hero's journey, but the heroine's journey remains untold. So um, I'll be launching that on the 22nd of the 2nd, 222, when tickets go on sale. So stay tuned for that. But getting back to water, here in the east, you know, i just give you another shot of this wonderful rain that's happening in the desert. And it has been raining all day on the eve of this Lunar New Year beginning tomorrow on the 10th. Just fabulous. And, you know, obviously because we're in a desert here in um, Tamarat in Morocco on the coast, it's very exciting when it rains, you know. It's um, through the omission of something that we learn to really value it. And, you know, in the West we tend to grizzle and complain if it's, you know, a wet day. It's like, oh, I want the sun because the sun is the masculine, whereas the rain and the moon is more feminine. So in the East, you know, I notice here the women come out at night. Okay, you don't see them much during the day, but at night, everyone sits on their terraces, on their rooftops and moon bathes and pours tea into little tea glasses and enjoys the art of conversation or they'll just come out onto the street. You know, the, the, the markets here are in the evenings. They go late into the evenings. You know, it's like these are moon worshippers. They're, they're mystics. They come from the desert. And of course, you know, you're a mystic if you live in the desert because it's so zen. You've got all the sky, all the ancestors above you, the star tribes, and then just the sands. Of course, you contemplate the eternity of existence. So in the West, we're suffering um, from infertility, okay, amongst men and women. And I believe that is because the feminine is not honoured and in the elements that's water. So one of the ways that we can each restore the balance as the rainmaker, as the alchemist on the understanding everything is interconnected in the quantum field, the microcosm and the macrocosm, is to give ourselves that space, that negative space to be, that yin time. Because when we're not just productivity, go, 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 do, 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 amping up our adrenals on coffee. When we give ourselves the time and the space to stop and reflect, that's when we feel, that's when we connect with our feelings. And allowing the tears to flow is like the spring rains nourishing the crops, yeah? When we cry, endorphins are released and our social mask becomes less rigid, we become more approachable, our eyes become more beautiful, more clear, more coloured. And I believe it, it promotes longevity. 
you know? People say to me, oh, you don't look 53. And, you know, I, I've never had the money to spend on expensive beauty products, but I cry, <laughs> you know? And I have a theory I say in my women's circles, as above, so below, if you want to stay juicy, ladies, make sure that you stay connected with your feelings, you know? So um, that's just my two two cents on, on how we can all play a part in bringing back fertility, particularly those of you that are uh, watching this transmission from the West, you know, really honour your feelings and give yourself some sacred bathing time, you know, whether that's a bath or a shower or swimming in a local river, you know, or anointing yourself with blessed water, but really honour water, the element of water, and maybe do a libation tomorrow, pouring some blessed water onto the earth, since this year of the earth dragon, the wood dragon, is about us showing up and embodying um, life and, and our full potential, our full possibility in an incarnate earthly form. And what is that? Well, it's love. Okay, that's our true eternal essence. We are the light of love. And every other identity that we fixate on and debate about is just a distraction. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in on my Friday Venusian uh, sermon from the Mound of Venus. And I'll be back next Friday. Uh, you have my blessing to share this if you, if you feel to. And thanks so much for watching. Ciao for now. And blessings on your Lunar New Year to all the sisters that are gathering in red tents and moon lodges this weekend or today, tonight. Uh, have a beautiful circle. I'm gathering uh, 13 women here in Morocco and uh, we'll be connecting with you in the ethers. Ciao for now, everybody.